Greetings friends and welcome to Finding Holiness, the channel to help you discover your sacred sanctum in life. I'm Rabbi David Kadosh. Last week, we glanced upon the natural tendencies of waves and how God performs natural miracles in preventing them from taking over all the dry land. We recall the disaster which happens when God loosens his grip and tsunami strike. On a simple level, which we should learn to appreciate the day-to-day -day wonders of waves and find God's holiness in the way they conduct themselves. Nonetheless, the aforementioned holiness aspect of waves is wonderful to appreciate from the outside, but when entering the ocean, we are certainly more cautious. We ensure to keep proximity to the shoreline, and we take extra precaution when we have our children with us. Waves can be fun, but they can be perilous and unsafe. Can there be a fundamental and more meaningful facet of waves that we can apply to our spiritual self? I'd like to provide you with three ways of understanding. The Ben Ishchai, in his book Ben Yehoyada, says that the waves crashing onto the dry land is an allegory to the wise scholar who needs to know his boundaries. There are many scholars who gain immense knowledge, can publicly lecture to thousands, but they don't have their character traits and their eretz in check. In describing Benayahu, one of King David's mighty men, the prophet uses the term Rav Pe'alim, which the Ben Ishchai conjugates the word Pe'alim to read Po'el Yam, the way of the sea. Just like the way of the sea is for the waves to crash at the seashore, so too a Torah scholar, although he has gained lots of wisdom, must be careful not to transgress his own border and compromise on his character traits and attributes. This is what made Benayahu such a righteous person. The Kaliyakar explains that just like the waves of the ocean are higher than the shore, yet they fall on themselves because of God's order of nature, a person needs to ensure that he isn't high of himself in arrogance and haughtiness. A person must break towards the lower seashore, humble in spirit and lowly in his character. Both his inside traits and outward appearance must aim to be meek and modest. Only then will a person be able to retain his Torah and be a shining light to those around him. In a deeper light, within that same excerpt of conversations among the waves we mentioned in part one of this topic, there's another discussion that would require some explanation. The Gemara states, in the name of Rabbah, Seafarers related to me that when this wave that sinks a ship appears with a ray of white fire at its head, we strike it with clubs that are inscribed with the names of God. I am that I am, Yah, the Lord of hosts. Amen, amen, Selah. And then the wave abates. What is the meaning of this peculiar piece of text? Harav Chida, Rabbi Chaim Yosef David Azulai, in his book Petach Enayim, explains metaphorically that the boat and the wave correspond to the person and his evil inclination respectively. The inclination wishes to subdue the human the same way that the wave wishes to drown the boat. The wave appears with a ray of white fire since the essence of the evil inclination is that of fire. Our job on this world is to stand strong against the Yetzir Hara, the evil inclination, and break through the wave. And the only way to do that is by the study of Torah. The Talmud states that God pronounced, I created the evil inclination but I created the Torah as its remedy. This is represented in the parable by the seafarers striking it with wooden clubs inscribed with the name of God. The clubs, in plural, refer to the two Torahs, the written and the oral one. Their core is wood, which denotes the Etz HaChaim, the tree of life, which we strive to grab and hold on to every day of our lives. As it's written in Proverbs, she is a tree of life to those who grasp her and whoever holds on to her is happy. Think back to every time you enter the ocean or a wave pool. All you're trying to do is beat the wave. Jump over it. Keep your head above the water and stand your ground. If you manage to defeat the evil inclination in its attempt to triumph over you, you will have succeeded in making your life that much more spiritual and holy. Stay tuned for the next episode as we search for meaning and spirituality in another one of our everyday encounters. Catch me on Twitter and Instagram with the handle Finding Holiness. Visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash findingholiness and our website at findingholiness.buzzsprout.com where you can download, check out, and support all our future podcasts. Signing off, I'm Rabbi David Kadosh.